everyone, I'm, I'm Alison Walker. I'm a director in the financial investors group in uh, Alvarez and Marcel. Um, I focus mostly on PE and um, this is this podcast is focusing on women for this episode. Um, I'm joined by Sabna from Sinvin. Thank you very much for joining us. So I just wonder whether you can just kick off by uh, you telling us a bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today as senior tax manager at Sinvin. Sure. Firstly, thank you for inviting me. I started my career in tax at Grant Thornton as a graduate in their financial services tax team. And I was there for four years, just over four years. I did an accounting qualification and my experience at Grant Thornton, which I think has been a blessing throughout the years, was very varied. And then I moved to EY in their financial services tax team and focused for the next four and a half years purely pretty much on private equity with advisory bits on private equity and credit funds. And then in December 2021, I joined Sinvin and I wanted to move. I think I was quite pigeonholed in my role for a while. I learned a lot from that experience and I got, I became quite a big sub- subject matter expert in the PE compliance space, I would say, and just the PE tax, but with a focus really on the UK. Mm-hmm. So then coming on to that, uh, like the next question then, uh, which I think flows quite nicely is, what advice would you give a younger person, a younger woman, you know, starting out in private equity tax or even tax or even your younger self? The first one, and I still struggle with this one, but the first one is believe in yourself and be your own cheerleader. Believe that you can do things. And that doesn't mean there won't be mistakes and there won't be failures and you won't make a mess of something. Because you probably will. Like, I'm, I'm sure we've all made mistakes in our career. You know, I've had to hold my hand up and be like, oh, sent that to the wrong person, or this has happened, or I'm pretty sure I sent that and that's wrong. There was a mistake. In it. Yeah. There will be mistakes, but more often than not, you can recover from those mistakes. But if you don't champion yourself, no one else is going to champion you. I think the second thing I'd say is, goes back to what we were just talking about earlier, which is our differences is or our way of thinking makes us good and i've only learned that in the last couple of years but i'm very lucky with the manager i currently have she's been incredible at reminding me that my experience today is why i was hired which means the way i think which has been developed from that is actually quite important and often we feel if we're junior compared to other people in the team your voice is not as valuable but that's not correct Mm. and sort of being able to ask questions or speak your mind is quite important and 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 that will also develop confidence but i think just knowing that it's okay to be different and bring that version of yourself like i'm very different to a lot of people i'm very specific about certain things that i do I'd like to get your view on, on the market, if that's okay. So especially in the last year and in particular the last few months, I think it's been quite an uncertain time for PE. I mean, it's over lockdown, it was a very buoyant time for PE. I think none of us have ever seen like the quantity <laughs> and the size of deals like over like, you know, in the last one before the last year. So yeah, I just wondered what your perspective was on the market and why you th- what you think the drivers are for what it was. You're right. Uh, compared to like lockdown, it's such a stark contrast yeah. in the PE market, whereas so much activity was happening. It's sort of almost gone down quite a lot, curtailed quite a lot. It's quite difficult to get deals across the line, and I know you're seeing that. And you are having to pens up and pens down very quite quickly. a lot. And we're seeing yeah. that where even if you've got an add on, mm. it's going right the way, and then suddenly it's like, well, pens down, actually, we're not going ahead don't really know there's quite a few different reasons why but then it picks up again Mm -hmm. and then potentially goes through or potentially is still on hold so we've seen both sides of that happening as well summer's generally quiet anyway but even the six months of start of the year were incredibly quiet compared to normal and i think it's because it is harder to get loans and it's harder to get funding generally Mm -hmm. but also i think deals are becoming a lot more complicated and so I think that is extending the window that, yeah. that it takes to get a deal over the line and then inevitably something gets in the way. I'm finding that, you know, when deals used to close in a matter of like three months, now I think we're closing on some deals that start in December. And that's not even financial services, I assume, because that no. you're looking at a 12 month year yeah. now, yeah. right, with all of the regulatory rules, yeah requirements, approvals and the rest of it. Yeah. So all of those things. And I think, you know, I was expecting that that would mean that you would have somewhat of a quieter summer. 
Mm. from a tax perspective. Yeah. That hasn't happened. (laughs) It's been as busy as ever. Yeah. Because you actually realise, you know, the tax market is ever-changing. Jurisdictions are bringing more and more regulation in. All things are changing and requirements are changing. Pillar 2. Exactly. And Pillar 2 is one of those things where there's been a change in goalposts every three months. Yeah. And it's still a change in goalposts. Yeah. You know, we're still not entirely 100% on what is the definition of this thing. And Pillar 2 is more of an accounting requirement that we're going to have to think about, but it falls into tax. Yeah. And then, so that requires working with all of your portfolio groups and thinking about these things Mm. and making sure that everyone knows what they're doing and messaging gets to them and figuring that process out. So, but that's really quite interesting to see as well because you get to work in completely different cultures across these groups and different businesses have different ways of working. So it's quite interesting to see that because you will have portfolios that have it well covered and then yeah. others who don't have a head of tax and so they have no idea what Pillar 2 is. And then the compliance burden then goes up to you. Yeah, yeah. and so just considering all of those mm-hmm. things. And I think, you know, jurisdictions overall, what I found in the last sort of 12 to 18 months, there are more questions coming up from authorities. Yeah. There are more nudge letters from mm-hmm. HMRC. There are a lot more you know kind of new requirements from a compliance perspective so all of those things just increase the actual workload and so it doesn't mean that the tax overall is quiet and how are you finding you know preparing things for sale because you know obviously like internally you've got some kind of timetable before you we even see it like does that mean that you know that timeline just gets like extended and extended and extended or is that extra buffer time for you to get the stuff fixed if you need to fix it? So everything will go to the committee and then there's like a, almost like a 12 month to 18 month clock that starts mm-hmm. and then teams start engaging and preparing accordingly. And then we don't, as the core tax team, we don't come in until quite late on in terms of exit prep itself, but I will work with the transaction service team if there are things mm-hmm. that we need to kind of look at or think about. It will become more difficult as we want to sell more because there'll be simultaneous things happening. And I think, especially when you're buying and you're selling at the same time, Mm. there will definitely be a crossover where things will need to be even more dynamic. So I think the pressure will probably increase, especially whenever the market turns, hopefully soon. And then I guess you've also then got to think about timing as to whether somebody else is selling something similar. Exactly. All that impacts on the price, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of sort of uncertainty, as you've said, but hopefully over the longer sort of, I guess, the next, the next sort of period, mm-hmm. we'll be able to see that the market sort of starts becoming a little bit better. I'm always interested to hear women who are in tax, in particular the private equity tax, because we all know in PE, like time is not under your control and, you know, your weekends and evenings can just get taken away from you really quickly and, you know, how you balance that and how you set boundaries and things like that. I can't say I've been the best historically. I struggled at both Grant, both Grant Thornton and at EY to get any form of balance, especially at EY. I just worked all hours of the day and so I would kind of train on and off. And I think it was part of the reason that I felt like I was burning out and I wasn't really sure that tax was for me at the time. Having said that, I kind of reassessed and when I joined Simlin, I was even through the interview process quite open and honest mm-hmm. about the fact that you know, I want to take time to focus on my health. And I had started taking weightlifting seriously, I'd say probably, and, you know, started getting back into training seriously in September 2021. So when I joined Simpson, I knew that that was important. Starting there and setting boundaries in some senses is easier because you're starting somewhere new. But also those hours that I'm at the gym, I do not check my work phone, barely check my personal phone. Mm. But you know, that time is my time. Nothing gets in the way of me and working out Mm. unless I'm sick. It's also blocking out your diary. Like I don't want calls in my diary before 9.30 at the very earliest because I need time to get to work, have breakfast. Like it's not even just about training, right? As you will be well aware, it's about food and how you maintain eating all of the right things. Because food is recovery, yes. And I, I like pick up most of my food so that yeah. it's making sure kind of I've got that and I'm doing all the right things mm. for that. And also, fundamentally, I'm just a nicer person to everyone if I've trained. So like it's for my mental health as, as much as it is for my physical health. I don't know if you'll agree with this, but I wasn't really taught boundaries very well growing up. No, because, me neither. You I know, was, yeah. you're a girl and I'm in a, brought up in quite a traditional like South Asian background like household and you kind of agreed to everything that was done around 
the men of the house. And so now, having learned in difficult ways, enforcing boundaries, I'm always very proud when I can say, no, I can't make that. You've seen there's something in my diary, I can't make it. And there's nothing, you can go ahead and do the meeting without me, or you can rearrange it for a time I can make it. Yeah, and I think that that is quite important for people to you know, an important lesson for people to learn and I've learned it the hard way. Like, you know, there have been occasions where I've been burnt out because, you know, you keep saying yes to things and keep, you know, agreeing to move things around when really, if you don't do whatever hobby that you want to do, it doesn't make you a very nice person. It also makes you quite dumb and depressed, I think. That concludes our interview. Thank you very much for your time today and hopefully everybody who uh, listens to this podcast or watches this podcast finds it insight. Thank you. Thank you.